All right, so this, this video is for those people who really want to understand how to work with this fucking mess on screen right now. Look at this, look at betrayal help, haha. -ha. There you go. That's the video. You're done. Read this, you're done. No, obviously. So syndicate or betrayal is one of the more complicated parts of Path of Exile because it has it explains nothing it just throws this at your face and gives you a little bit of a fucking garbage can of a help screen so what is this it targets syndicate members to gain intelligence about their division safe house when a bar hits 100 percent raid that safe house a syndicate member you haven't encountered yet is a question mark yellow bar is same division green bar is members that trust each other red bars are members that hate each other relationship or members that an encounter affects available options sergeant lieutenant captain these are the ranks higher rank members are more rewarding but more dangerous and these are items items confer special abilities that make the fights more difficult you don't give a shit about the items you don't give a shit about anything about about what they say here so i'm going to run a I'm just gonna um, empty my inventory here because this is the stuff from the video I was recording a sec ago. So I'm just gonna take all of this off. Okay, so I'm gonna run a tier one map. Just a simple tier one. Actually, I hate tier one maps. Dunes. Who doesn't love dunes? Right? So we go dunes. Dunes. I'm gonna turn my. Um, June miss missions on so that I can show you guys exactly how they work. Let's go to a map and we'll see. I'll also be telling you guys how to earn money, not just a guide. I'll also include how to earn money doing this strategy as well. So it's not just a waste of time to understand how it works. So, oh look, delirium mirror. Ignore it. I, I'm gonna turn it on. Why not? So, here is your first syndicate encounter in the map. You can have three, di four different kinds of syndicate encounters in your maps, but only three at a time. I've never seen four different encounters pop up in the same map. Textures are being a little bit weird right now, as you can clearly see. So let's just ignore those. This is the first map that I'm running um, after having the game turned off, so it's taking a little bit of time. So, this, when you see a carriage over here, is going around on your map, that is the transportation, um, transportation syndicate counter, okay? So, there was only one syndicate member in this one, Tora. So, we go to Tora, we uh, say, okay, now we have three different options. The option on the left, option on the right, and an option in the middle, which is release. What do these three options do? Well, the left option will always be interrogate. What does interrogate do? Interrogate gives you, it says over there, Torah is in prison for three turns. Plus three intelligence, transportation intelligence, per turn, minus one rank on release. What exactly does this mean? Well, the bars that the betrayal help thing was telling you about are these bars here. These bars tell you how much intelligence you have for that safe house, for that type of safe house. Right? There are four different types. Intervention, which is seen with this two, two swords and a assassin mask. There is research, which looks like a coiled snake around a jar. There is Fortification, which is just this fortification icon, wall, wooden wall. And then there's transport, which is just a wheel. Right, so those are the four safe houses. This one, one at the top is the mastermind's lair, which you get in a way that I'll tell you in a bit. Right, so let's just not talk about that for now. Now, all of your safe houses will be arranged the same way. Transportation is on the left, fortification over here, research here, intervention. You can even see the names written on the board. Intervention, research, um, fortification, and transportation. So, 
Tora, Tora is in transportation right now. You can move them around as well, depending on where you want them. And I'll tell you why that matters in a sec as well. So for now, let's go over what these three options do. Interrogate, they get imprisoned. What does that mean? Well, imprisoned means that Tora cannot show up again for three whole turns. Three turns means Tora can show up for three encounters of Syndicate. Okay, three encounters of Syndicate Torah cannot show up. You see here, I already have three people currently being interrogated in my prison. You can cannot have more than three people. So there's three here. If I throw Torah into interrogation, which I will in the end, you'll see that the last person moves forward. It goes right to left, right? So they show up here, they move left, they move left again, fills up and the leftmost person fucks off if you put in this person and they come back into the pool of syndicate agents that can show up in your encounters okay and the middle button is release release me if you don't want to interrogate them and you don't like the option on the right you can just release them and nothing happens she can show up again she can do whatever she wants nothing changes you do need to use this sometimes when the options are really really bad but it's rare the right one is what you're going to be clicking on most of the time what is this well right now there there was only one person that showed up if there was more than one person that showed up into this map right then the first person who you interact with right actually not the first person both of them the right option will either be execute which gives them plus one rank so if this said execute it would say plus one rank and then torah will go up to rank two the different ranks just makes their rewards higher tiers right and you ideally want the best agents to be rank three because that's when you get the best stuff out of them okay so let's say there were two agents here and we executed one of them to raise their rank. The other one, basically the last agent that is left, cannot be executed. Every single other agent can be executed to increase their rank. Right, but the last one will have some garbage right option. It'll either be bargain, it'll be drop a map or drop an item, or it'll just be garbage like that. If an agent is already max rank and they're not the last one standing then they will still have the execute option but it'll say already max rank has no effect so you don't want to use it on them okay so for now i'm going to send to our inter interrogation and you'll see guff be thrown out i am wrong actually i am stupid so it goes right to left so torah came in here corel left if I do it again, Hillock will leave. If I do it again, Guff will leave. I am a goof. Ignore that little piece of information there. So I did that. She's gone. She dropped nothing. I have gems to level. All right, now look, I, I did nothing. I just moved and another thing popped. This was the intervention encounter. This can happen at any point in your maps. Usually this happens while you're interacting with a different league mechanic. In this case, I was interacting with Syndicate and they just came out. What is intervention? It's generally the scariest one because these units come out to try and kill you, basically. Right, transportation, they're protecting their transport. But intervention, they are only here to kill you and they will chase you down until they kill you. And if they kill you, you can't just come back into the map and kill them. They leave. You have failed that particular intervention encounter. Okay, I can't show you myself failing because there's no way they could have ever killed me. As you can see, too tanky. But yeah, so now we have three different units here. Okay, that fled. We have Vagan, Vagan, and we have Leo. So you see, both of these have no rank and no icon. That means that these guys just spawned. They, they, were, they didn't belong to any particular safe house. Now, that means they can go anywhere. If you see, if I execute it that fled, 
he will get plus one rank and he will move to intervention because this is where I'm executing him. I don't want him in execution, I mean in intervention, so I won't do this. I'll check others. Same with Vagan, Vagan, plus one to rank if I execute him and he moves to intervention. Now Leo already is in intervention, so what does he say? Plus one rank to Leo on execute and if you notice the left side of all of them say the same thing. But since these guys have no rank, the higher the rank, the more intelligence you get if you interrogate them. No rank gives you plus one, one rank gives you plus three, two ranks gives you plus six, and three ranks gives you plus nine. Right, so that's what that is. If I'm going to execute Vagan because I don't really give a shit about him, and he goes to intervention, I'm going to execute Leo, same thing, and, I, and he dropped an item, a veiled item. I'll tell you guys about real items at the end of the video. Now look at this guy. His thing changed. He doesn't have the execute option anymore. Now he has bargain. What does his bargain say? It that fled and Eldrion become trusted. And we get plus four research intelligence. Now what does this tell us? If we look at the map right now, do you guys see someone named Eldrion? No, there is no Eldrion. Right, but Eldrion is another one of the syndicate agents. You don't always see all of them. Sometimes they're behind a question mark. Sometimes they just haven't spawned yet at all. And they will take some time, some more runs to randomly spawn in. So, it gives us plus four research intelligence. So if you use your think thonkers a little bit, you will know that Eldrion is probably the leader of the research safe house. That is why we're getting some research intelligence by why these two becoming trusted. Right now, what is trusted? If you remember the betrayal help thing, trusted means that, that, that those two are friends. Friends or rivals both mean the same thing. You want as many friends and as many rivals as you can because that means that those two can show up in the same encounter. Let's say Leo has a friend named Haku, right? And he's like, hey Haku, come help me help, help me execute this guy. So he him and Haku both show up to execute me. But Haku is in research, right? So I can execute Haku in my intervention encounter and get a rank up on him or be more intelligence on him either way they both more agents showing up in the same encounter is very very nice right and with rivals same thing if leo comes to attack me and haku is his rival then he will show up and attack leo because he's like hey while you're trying to kill someone i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna use this opportunity to kill you which in turn, for you, the only thing that matters is he shows up and then you can kill him as well. He's not going to leave. Uh, if And uh, he's never going to kill Leo. Like, rivals showing up, they will never kill anyone. Okay? So there's that. Also, if you notice one thing, these two had two turns on them before. Now they have one turn, which means this second encounter made those two tick down one coin, one tick, one turn. And Tora had three when we interrogated her, and then now she's at two because we just had an encounter, so one turn passed. I'm gonna do bargain because I don't want him, I don't wanna imprison him, I don't wanna release him. I'm just gonna bargain, get some more intelligence, and make them trust it. So we bargain. See, he just linked to this. So this is where Elrion is. Okay, a quick thing about leaders of safe houses they don't mean shit, okay? The, the thing about leaders is they just it's harder from them for them to spawn in your encounters that's the only thing so if you want someone to be a higher rank there are options sometimes to execute someone and make them the leader of a safe house if you want that person's rewards to be higher you don't want to really do that that's the only thing the other thing about leaders is that they show up in your mastermind boss fight Again, you don't really give a shit about them showing up because if you, you're going to be strong enough anyway, they're not that strong, so it's completely fine. Again, more gems to level up. You'll get, I'll tell you guys why I'm leveling a bunch of gems afterwards in a different video. 
Now there's one syndicate encounter left, so I'm just gonna go around this map and try to find it. You don't have to kill anything to make it spawn. Syndicate encounters have already spawned in the map, you just have to find them. What the heck? You just go around, go around, oh look. I... I'm gonna adjust a bit. So here we have our next syndicate encounter. Now what is this? This is a research encounter. Research is one of the best encounters you can get. This is where most of the expensive agents want to be. This is where you get your Aisling. This is where you get your XP. This is where you get your Breedstone upgrades. Very, very nice. You have to quickly clear through this. You don't have to kill them all. You just have to get to the end here and kill the, uh, the agents at the end. I only got one, this Worishi. This guy. Alright, so this is what we have for Worishi. Since he was the only person here, we cannot execute him. You can only bargain or interrogate. Bargain is drops on a rare, rare mod. Interrogate is some in research intelligence. I don't want such garbage to your research intelligence. I'm just gonna bargain, get an item. Maybe it's good. This one actually has some potential to be good. All right, and that is done. We are done with our syndicate encounter. Now, you want to keep running these. I'm just going to open up the board again. You want to keep running your encounters until you get 100% intelligence information about a safe house. When you run that safe house, you will get the rewards of, of the tiers of the agents that are in that particular safe house. And I'll show you a spreadsheet of all the rewards in a moment here, right? And I'll show you the best ones and the ones that cost the most and the ones you want to be seeking out. So before that, just this, the main way to progress your syndicate is to just keep running maps. You either put syndicate on your map device through the mission or you take your syndicate nodes on the tree. The strongest syndicate nodes are this one, Completing your maps grants 10 intelligence for a random syndicate safe house. These can be anything. And it says here, safe houses which have already been located can still be randomly selected. Okay, so let's say, let's say all of your safe houses have intelligence, right? That doesn't mean that you're automatically going to start getting intelligence for the mastermind player, no. If this one has 100 intelligence and you can beat a map, this one can get selected and it just nothing happens. So you always want to be running your safe houses unless you don't. And I'll tell you when you do not want to run a safe house even if it's at 100%. So I'll tell you that in a bit. But yeah, you want to get your safe house to full 100%. You want to run that safe house and what happens then is you have to kill the agents, get the rewards. And the leader of that safe house you can interrogate them to get intelligence for your mastermind slayer as you see i'm at 90 percent the higher the rank of your agent the more intelligence they will give you for your mastermind layer when you interrogate them in their safe house really really important there so now that you know that there's one more thing when do you not run a safe house well you do not run a safe house if all the agents in that safe house are the ones that you want and they are already high rank because if you run a safe house all the agents can get reset their rank gets reset and they can go anywhere else god if i run this safe house for example and i kill these three Janice can fuck off into transportation, Chimeria can become the leader of fortification, and Guff can just get removed entirely. Maybe. Right? It's possible. And get replaced by someone else. You don't know. You will have to run another syndicate to find out. So in that case, you do not want to run this safe house if you wanted Janus, Guff to both be in fortification. Okay? Now, what does the Mastermind's Lair even do? Well, Mastermind's Lair increases the rewards and rank of all the agents by one. So let's say we have Hillock over here in Intervention at rank 2. 
right and it also shows you by the way what these people do sort of forging powerful equipment forging gem agnostic sockets um betting on item outcomes accumulating currency shards smuggling essences these are a bit vague sometimes so the spreadsheet i'll show you i'm mean, not a spreadsheet though sheet i'll show you will have better descriptions of what each of these people do okay so yeah if Hillik is level 2 and we run the Mastermind layer, Hillik will then go to level 3 and we will get his level 3 reward. If Hillik is level 3, he can go up to level 4. Right? And that is that can only happen with the Mastermind hideout and level 4 agents give you really, really amazing things. You can get winged scarabs, you can get the T4 Aisling Slam, you can get white sockets from Morichi, you can get a lot of really, really good things. So you definitely want your agents to be as high rank as possible. Some of these agents are absolutely garbage and you shouldn't even care about them. Haku being one of them. He is one of the worst ones I've seen. You don't even want him anywhere in your syndicate. If you get the option to remove him, you remove him. All right. So that is it. That is your syndicate guide. Now I'll tell you which ones that you want to be searching to make the most money. Okay. So let's now quickly switch over. I will open up a syndicate cheat sheet. And I will leave this sheet in the comment section below for you guys to open up and see for yourselves. But yeah, this is our cheat sheet. This, you ignore this. Right, you can click on this just to remind yourselves what, what is great, what is bad, and what to just ignore. Okay, one click. Great, two clicks, maybe three, ignore. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight this for you. You can take a screenshot and you can just use it as your indication. You can have it open on your second monitor if you have a second monitor. If you don't, have it open on your phone, Alt tab to look at it, whatever you want. Okay, so let's start with Aisling on the left hand side. Aisling in transportation gives you double wheeled weapons and jewelry garbage you don't want it same with fortification you do not want it you want easling to always be in research this is amazing this easling and research can be sold for about three divines maybe four maybe two low end lowest is two highest is four just depends on who's online and how many people are doing syndicates at that moment okay that's very very nice easling Research, amazing. Easing an intervention. Torment scarabs, and as you can see a trend here, every single person in intervention gives you scarabs. Okay, so and if this is level four, also yeah, remember, Aisling only has this, the Aisling slam, in tier four. So you do need her to be level three when you do your mastermind to get tier four Aisling. Tier 4, any intervention member in Tier 4 will give you a winged scarab. Right, so if you cannot get Aisling in research, no matter what you do, getting them in scarabs is fine because you get, get a winged torment scarab and those are going for quite a decent amount. Chimeria, time-worn unique. You see this picture of a headhunter and you go, ooh, shiny. You're never getting a headhunter. Chimeria, useless. Fortification gives you harbinger arms useless research gives you orbs of unmaking why useless sulfide scarabs winged sulfide scarab is pretty good for the dell farmers not that many of them but they exist this is also somewhat decent most of the scarab ones are going to be in maybe if you can't get him anywhere else and you can't get rid of him then put him in intervention elrion one two three unique weapons now what does this mean why, why are these tiers here this is if he's at rank one he'll give you one at rank two he'll give you two rank three he'll give you three and i'm sure rank four he gives you four you don't want unique weapons you never get anything good you don't want unique armor you're never gonna get anything good you don't want unique jewelry it'll always be bad reliquary scarabs decent now gravisius is an interesting one he can sometimes give you pretty good stacks of divination cards. The higher the level, the better the chances are of him giving you good 
divination card. So I'll, I'll put him in a yellow. Random diff card as well. It could be a, this is just a gamble. Right? Maybe you'll get something good, maybe you won't. Swap a divine card for random ones. This was we should just ignore this. You can put in a reign of chaos and get a apothecary. Maybe. One in a billion chance, right? Weightage works here, everything works here. Completely random. Useless. Divination scarab. Winged divination scarab. Very nice. So if you don't want him anywhere else, put him in there. You get a winged divination scarab. Guff. This guy is known as Tiny. Because if you go into the syndicate room, you will see a tiny bench. That's the name of the bench. Right, and he'll just give you different kinds of crafts. So him in transportation will give you a craft that lets you spam chaos orbs. You make an item, you put in a normal item, a white item. You spam chaos orbs. You can exalted orb slam. You can divine orbit. You can blessing orbit. And you can vile it if you feel crazy. It's just to YOLO on a random base and see if you can get anything nice. In the second one, fortification, this one is like... It's okay. Sometimes you can get an item that you can actually use. Most times, maybe not. It gives you like 40 seconds to do this, so you have to be really quick. Um, and the higher rank you are, the higher rank he is, the more time you get and the more... Um, currency you get to slam onto things. Time craft, same thing. This is with essences. You get random essences to use on your gear. You can exalt slam them, you can scour it, and you can wall it. No divines, no chaos. This one's not as good in my opinion. Yeah. Research is the worst one. Kind of ish. Right? Because you can make an item rare. Actually, this is the better one, give or take. You can make an item rare, delete all of the mods with annulment orbs, add one mod at a time, and if you get a bad one, you can annul it and do it again, and do it again, but then you, you could annul one of the good ones. So this is just also a Hail Mary, but it's one of the bad ones, so I don't really like it. Intervention Guff does not give scarabs. The only person on the list that doesn't give scarabs. He gives random bullshit. Basically, transmute, alteration. This lets you alteration spam an item and make it rare with one regal orb and then exalt and divine for something. This is good if you want to roll a cluster jewel or something. You can use it for that. Otherwise, it's pretty, pretty bad. Alright, I'm gonna give this trash. Here's our resident garbage can. Haku. Rare items, trash. Magic, rare, unique, strong box, trash. Rare items with quality, wow, trash. Amber scarabs, great. You want a winged amber scarab. Hillock is our boy. Hillock is the best one, one of the best ones, along with Easling. In every single role you can put him in, he is great, except intervention, which is where my Hillock is currently shitting in. So we have Hillock, transportation Hillock, quality to weapon. This goes for about 100 to 150 chaos. If you get him to level level four, right, which is pretty decent, but the best one is armor. Armor hill goes for about a divine. So does twenty eight percent flask. Also, the divine ones are the ones where hill is tier four, so thirty and twenty eight. You can sell the lower tier ones as well, but those might go for like a hundred C, maybe like eighty C, something along those lines. Abyss, Scarab, Winged Abyss, Gilded Abyss, they're okay, but you don't really want them. I'm gonna put a red one there because Abyss isn't really that nice. It that fled. Breed Splinters? He does not give you a large enough stack size of them for this to be viable, so this is a bad. Enchanted Map. This is just, oh, your map contains a breach. Horrible. Research It that fled. This is the one that you really, really want. He can upgrade your Breach Stone. Right, so level one it that flat can upgrade your normal breach stone into a charged breach stone. Level two can do enriched, level three can make it a pure breach stone, which is worth like 1.2, 1.3 divine. So your chayula breach stone worth 60c 
into a pure Jeweler Breedstone worth 1.3 divines. And at level 4, he can upgrade two Breedstones. So, two Breedstones, two Jeweler Breedstones, two anything Breedstones into two pure ones. Really good, really amazing, can basically give you two instant divines, you don't even have to sell anything on any website, any TFT for your Aisling or whatever, you can just instantly upgrade a Breedstone and you're good. Breach curves, um, they're all right. Giannis, not a good agent. Quality currency, bad. Currency shards, exalt shards, sometimes, maybe. Never gonna give you fracturing shards, don't go for it, red. Expedition currency is relatively okay. Can give you like a decent stack size of exotic coins, maybe some burial medallions. So, okay. Expedition Scarab. People really like learning expeditions, but not to the point of running big scares. Most people just run rusted. This is bad. Jorgen. This is a bit of an interesting one. One tier one, tier two, tier three. Talismans. Well, talismans, am I right? Um, let me just. What is this? Oh, hey. My jewel sold. Look at that. Actually, I'll still, I'll still some other time. One, two, three, aspect mod rares, not good either. This one, corrupt an amulet to a talisman. This is an interesting one. So if your attribute, if your implicit on an amulet is something you do not need, you can corrupt it into a talisman. And that talisman can, you, if you've seen talismans, they have really interesting implicit modifiers on them. Right, so if you want to con con convert your normal amulet into a talisman, you can. It's risky, it's RNG, but people do buy this sometimes. So it's not the most expensive, but if you have Jorgen and he's in research, you might as well just keep it. Bestiary Scarab, mm, it's, it's okay. Corel Essences, he only gives you like screamings, maybe shriekings at tier 4. Not worth it. Map Fragments. Map Fragments are decent. Okay, they can give you Shaper Fragment, they can give you Mortal Fragments, they can give you whatever Fragment you want. They can even give you Ultimatum Fragments, I think. So this is really, really nice. They're not that amazing, so I'm gonna give it a, a yellow. Fossils are also okay-ish. Not that nice, not that bad. But overall, most of the time they're not gonna be good, so I'm gonna give it red. Elder Scarabs, no one gives a shit about anything higher than Rusted. Don't need them. Leo, catalysts. Catalysts are good. They can be further catalysts, the resistance ones, the um, life ones. Really, really nice. Random currency go. Um, this is like not that nice. Sometimes you get like maybe a few chaos, maybe an exalt. Um, something overall not that nice. Research Leo. Can reforge colors, sockets, or links. It's like okay. It can give you off colors. So like an armor base can roll all red. I mean all blues or all greens, or random colors basically. It's okayish, but like this is you never you can never sell this to anyone really. So it's most just to be used on your own shit. So this is a red in my opinion. Metamorph, lol. Riker, take one currency and it's timed. You have like 10-15 seconds to grab one currency item from a box of currency. They're always bad. Take one unique item, time, also bad. Take one splinter, essence, fossil, or catalysts. What is this? Blighted scarabs? Some people run blight. It's okay. Rin and transpiration gives you normal map. Rare maps. Unique maps can be de sometimes decent. Could give you Coward's Trial, could give you Synthesis maps, maybe. Could give you uh, some good stuff. So we put this in yellow. Cartography Scarabus, these do sell. So, yellow. Tora, take one item. This could literally be any item in the game, I think. But too rare, too time, too, too annoying. Um, lab Enchanted Gloves, Booster Helmet. This is just garbage. Tora in Research is really nice. Not very expensive, but just really nice to have if you get her in there. 20 million XP, 
70 million XP or 200 million XP to a gem. And tier 4 can give you twice as much. So it gives you two benches, both with 200 million. So you can put 400 million split two ways on maybe 200 million on one gem, 200 million on another gem. I really like this because it just speeds up my leveling time. I'm sorry if that snap was really loud. Speeds up leveling time for my awakened gems, for my gems that I'm leveling in my offhand. This sells for about 30 to 40 C if you want to sell it as well. But yeah, Harbinger Scarabs there. Okay. Legion Spinners? No. Legion Chests? So this is the way you have Warhords? It's basically that. You have a room of a warlord with a random reward in it. Not that nice. Incubators, not that nice. Legion scarabs are good. In the yellow, they're decent. Orichi, random quality gems. Yes, he can give you uh, any gem you want, but it's random quality gems means it can, he can give you like um, a grace gem with 10% quality on it. Socket currency, give you jeweler orb, fusing orbs, or chromatic orbs, which is literally just garbage. Research Warichi, very nice. This all this this is the most lucrative one you can get. Almost. Almost. Alongside Aisling. So this gives you at tier four gives you one to six white socket. And the way you sell this is that you go on TFT and you write have Warichi you want to sell. 50c per white socket what that means is the person gives you their armor and you smash it with warichi and let's say they get one white socket on their item because it's random you get one to six they give you 50c you're done if they get three white sockets they give you 150c if they get six white sockets they give you 600c which is about 1.618 1.5 whites. not that bad very easy to sell. People love this one. Green. Shaper scarabs are just a joke. So this is it. This is your entire screen for Syndicate. You can see here Research has most of the really juicy ones. Transport has Hillock only and the rest is all trash. Most of Syndicate is indeed just going to be garbage. Most of the time it's just going to be garbage. Right? That's fine. All you really need is one of these guys to hit tier 3 or even if they don't, you can still go, you can kill the mastermind and she can drop a devouring diadem which is worth 1.5 divines. She can drop a cane of Ulamak which is this fully unveiled cane and if you unveil that perfectly, it can, it can be like worth 50-60 divines. So it's worth it. And she also drops some scarabs. So that's also a plus. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I am happy to help. I enjoy making videos that can help people. Please let me know if there's anything else you need help with. Let me know if there's anything annoying in this video. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope it helped. Um, if anyone's watching this part of the video, comment how many numbers I'm holding up on my hand. Okay, and whoever is the first one to comment that down gets a random path of exile cookie. And who knows what you might find in your cookie. So let's see. Alright, see you. Bye bye.